I posted a picture on Instagram the other day showing a before and after picture of my face and talking about how I use a 48 hour fast to help reduce inflammation in my body from things that I eat. And I got a lot of questions. So I wanted to use this video to walk you through a 48 hour fast as I do it. If you want to hear about fasting, the do's and don'ts and who fasting might be right for, if it might be right for you, you can check out my other video that I have about that. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how I personally am still using fasting after being on a carnivore diet for over five years, how I incorporate it in my life and just some tips uh, and what it looks like for me. There are three main reasons why I still continue to incorporate a 48 hour fast once or twice a month on a carnivore diet. And the first and foremost is to help with weight loss and weight management. I don't track my macros. I don't really worry about how much I'm eating. I don't really want to play around with those levers. And so the lever that I choose to use to keep my weight where I want it to be and in a healthy range is by incorporating a 48 hour fast occasionally. I usually can drop a few pounds and then I tend to keep it off. Uh, after I go back to eating my regular carnivore meals. The second reason that I use fasting still is for appetite regulation. When I'm eating two meals a day, my appetite stays pretty under control. But then if I'm traveling or I go on a vacation, I'll start eating a little snacks. I'll have some cheese and pepperonis. I'll start grazing, eating more often. And when that happens, my appetite just feels insatiable. I have never had a history of of restrictive eating behaviors. My history has always been of overeating, of eating when I'm not hungry and just feeling this need to constantly eat all the time out of sheer boredom. And so incorporating a fast really helps me to get in touch with my true hunger, knowing that you don't have to eat every time you're hungry. A lot of times you want to eat just because you're bored or because you're stressed. And so incorporating a 48 hour fast helps to soften that voice in my head that's telling me that I need to eat all the time. And it just puts me in check with real hunger uh, and helps stop any and all emotional eating for me. And the third reason that I still incorporate fasting is to help keep inflammation low. Uh, before I was eating carnivore, I tended to swell and get a lot of inflammation from eating things, especially like nuts, sugar of any kind, uh, seed oils, processed foods. You can see in this picture, like my skin would completely break out. Anytime I'm eating really unclean inflammatory foods, I get a lot of acne. My nose even swells. Just my body holds a lot of water with any kind of carbs. Uh, and that's what I call inflammation. Even when I'm being strict carnivore, if I am eating too often, or if I'm eating what I would say like dirty carnivore or just not as strict clean carnivore, I still can experience a milder version of that inflammation. Now, that being said, the inflammation markers on my blood work are fantastic. They are all very low. But what I mean is just me holding some extra water, my skin starts to break out, me feeling a little stiff, my fingers will swell, and you can just kind of see overall I'm feeling pretty puffy. That can still happen to me even though I'm carnivore. It happens especially because I travel, you know, several times a month for my corporate job. And when I'm eating in restaurants, we know that they're not gonna be as clean. There's likely some type of seed oils or some kind of junk in the seasonings that they're using that I really can't avoid all of the time. And eating in a restaurant like that once isn't going to negatively affect me personally, but when I am doing it day after day or every day for a week, um, I tend to just start feeling not as great. Something like a 48 hour fast after a week or two of traveling can help flush out all of that water my body's holding, my skin will clear up, and I just will feel lighter overall. I get messages from people saying that they feel drained, tired, nauseous, or get headaches when they're fasting. And I always ask them if they're using electrolytes of any kind. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Element. These convenient little packets. They sponsor this video and a lot of my content, which I'm really appreciative of. But this little packet has a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and then 60 milligrams of magnesium. And that is a lot of what is going to keep you from getting headaches, feeling drained when you are fasting. I use one every day, even when I'm eating, I put it in my water uh, and then just drink it in the mornings. And it really helps me to feel regulated throughout the day. When I am fasting like this, you guys will see as we go throughout this video, I'll add an extra one if I'm getting hungry, if I'm feeling drained, or if I start experiencing a headache or foot cramps later in the afternoon. This is my go-to packet. 
if you want to try and see if this is helpful for you or see which one you like, Element has a deal for all my subscribers where you can get this free sample pack with any purchase. And it lets you try all eight of their flavors, see which one you like best. They have 100% money back guarantee, so you can uh, see how it affects you. And if you're feeling not quite right on a carnivore diet or while you're fasting, this really will help. For my meal, right before I start this 48 hour fast, I'm just gonna eat a normal portion. The point is not to like overly stuff yourself so then you're not full for 48 hours. It's not really possible. And then also it's counterproductive a little bit. If I were to eat a ton of food right now and overly stuff myself, it actually would cause like a greater insulin spike and a crash. And I personally have always found myself to be much hungrier if I eat a ton of food right before I go into fasting. The counter to that then is you also don't want to be under eating before you go into a fast. If I was to sit here and eat like six chicken wings and not have a really adequate meal, then it does two things. It's going to make me hungrier, uh, but also it's going to kind of signal to my body that I'm not getting food and then I go into fasting and I have noticed that over time that can slow my metabolism down in general. So I am looking for just an adequate amount of food. I'm going to have a New York strip, some butter, put lots of salt on it that I love. And then also I'm going to add some cheese to it. Uh, typically I might've had some chicken or something, but this is just what we happen uh, to be eating for lunch today. So cheese, butter, steak, all my favorite things as I go into this fast. Okay, today is Sunday and I just finished our family lunch and so I will not eat again until Tuesday for lunch. My favorite timing for a 48 hour fast is to do lunch, skip a day, and then lunch. So really mentally, it only feels like I'm not eating for one day. Um, I will go to the sauna this evening, Chris will go for a walk, the kids will get leftovers, like dinner tonight will be nice and simple on a Sunday night. And then tomorrow I'm traveling, so I'll walk you through what that looks like, but I always pick a day when I know I'm gonna be really busy or away from home or away from the kitchen. The days when I'm working from home and everybody else is gonna be sitting down to eat a family lunch, those are not the days that I pick to fast because it would be too hard to just be here all day not eating, right? Not eating is kind of boring, and so I pick days when I have a bunch of meetings, I'm busy, I'm on the go, I have a really long hair appointment, like, something that's gonna naturally keep me away from the house. And then I'm like, okay, I'll just work my fast around that schedule. So finished my Sunday lunch and we will wait again and eat on Tuesday. Okay, today is the day when I like won't eat the whole day and it's when it feels the longest. I'm very busy today. I'm headed to the airport this morning. Um, I am drinking my electrolytes. I started this this morning I bring a water bottle with me that's easier to travel with, but I wanted to get that like morning electrolytes in. Uh, and so I'll finish this by the time I get to the airport. Um, if you ever are fasting and you like feel nauseous, like that means you need to break your fast if you're lightheaded, that type of thing. But it is expected, you might feel a little hungry. Uh, and if I feel hungry later, I'm just gonna have some electrolytes, distract myself, try to be busy and it will pass. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you can tell over the video, but this is the cutest hotel. I have made it to my destination. Uh, as expected, I got a little hungry around lunch. It's very normal. Your body's used to eating around that time, so you get a little bit hungry, but it's nothing that some electrolytes and a little bit of time and distraction uh, can't make go away. It really just remind me that I wasn't actually hungry. It's just that it's meal time. My body's used to eating, so I eat, even though I'm not really hungry. Um, so yeah, that's the biggest reminder and something I love about fasting in general. I get a little cranky watching other people eat and snack on the plane, I'm not gonna lie, or smelling stuff around the airport. But once I make, make it past lunch and later in the afternoon, I'm like, hey, I've made it this far. Might as well go a little longer. And then by now, it's like seven o'clock at night, I got to my hotel, rather than going out and finding dinner and trudging around or ordering food and eating really late, it's like, hey, I've already made it this far, I might as well make it till morning. So like, these longer fasts for me, it's always about like, well, can I just go till lunch? Like, okay, I made it past lunch, let's wait till dinner. 
hey, I made it till dinner, let's just go to bed early and then wait till tomorrow morning. And I realize it's not really that bad uh, and we can survive. So there's my mindset for the day. I feel like I'm in the home stretch because I've made it to evening. I'm gonna unpack, iron my clothes for work tomorrow, settle in, and then I normally don't eat breakfast. So I feel like I've already, like to me, this is the point where I'm only two thirds of the way done, not even, uh, but I already feel like I've made it through all the hard part. And then I just get to wait and eat lunch tomorrow. So yeah, I'll keep you posted. I just got back to my hotel after a really long day. It is freezing cold and rainy here in Calgary um, where I was working today. So I walked back and forth a bunch in the rain. I taught all day. My plan was to break my fast at lunch. And then I actually just had some things I had to prep for our afternoon sessions during lunch. They had box sandwiches for everybody else, which I knew I wasn't eating. I had brought some carnivore snacks with me, but I actually wasn't that hungry and I was really busy. So I just kept fasting. I had some electrolytes for lunch uh, and then just kept working and didn't get a chance to think about it. But after work, I was definitely ready for a steak. I had a happy hour that I had to go to for work and there was just a bunch of appetizers. There was wings there, which I maybe could have eaten, but I really like to keep things simple. After I've been fasting this long, I try to eat simple steak, chicken, pork, like something kind of plain and not a huge portion of it. I never would want to finish a 48 hour fast like this and go straight to a Brazilian steakhouse or all you can eat meat. So uh, I sat through happy hour. I just had water. And then afterwards, some coworkers and I went to a restaurant and I got this beautiful Canadian beef filet. Uh, and then on the menu, they had burgers where you could add bacon to it. And then they had this steak that came with a bunch of sides. And so I just asked them, can I please have just a steak with some bacon on the side? Uh, and they brought it to me, which is usually you just tell them, here's what I want. And they have no problem bringing it to you. So I had this beautiful filet. I had some bacon. I resist the urge to like stuff myself. I just had a small amount of food, which was great. Kept it simple. And now I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, tomorrow I'm traveling home. I have a bag of carnivore snacks. I probably will eat on the way home. And then I will eat some steak when I get home. I will not do another fast like this for a while because I want to make sure that I can eat enough food. The biggest thing about fasting is you cannot combine fasting with chronic under eating. And so I wanna make sure that I am going to be fueling my body properly as I'm coming out of this fast. So I start small. Just for my gut, pro tip, if you're doing a 48 hour fast, keep it really simple afterwards and don't go far from a bathroom if you're new to it. It's the common complaint or something that people notice is that they eat after a 48 hour fast and then have to run to the bathroom. So don't touch your fart, don't go far from a bathroom. I kind of know what my limits are at this point. So that was the perfect amount of food for me. And then tomorrow I will go back to my normal eating schedule of two meals a day eat a decent amount of food, enough food to adequately fuel my body. So overall, I will weigh myself actually. We'll do a barely wrap up when I get home and I'll tell you the results and how I feel after a day of eating. It has now been 48 hours since ending my 48 hour fast. I couldn't weigh myself the very next day simply because I was not at home and didn't have access to a scale. So I'd eaten for a couple of days before I got to weigh myself. Um, I had initially, when I first weighed, I had dropped three pounds. My guess is it probably was four at first and then eating, I gained a little bit of it back and now it's been an entire other day of eating and I've gained back one more. So my guess is two pounds of like fat and water weight loss. That's pretty normal for me. I might see like three or four pounds in 48 hours the first time if I'm carrying a lot of extra water weight and then I'll keep off like two or three of that as long as I continue to keep things cleaner. If I start adding inflammatory foods back in, if I start snacking, if I eat in restaurants multiple days in a row, I'll see that scale and inflammation start to creep back up again. I'll get a little puffier, I'll get some breakouts, and I know it's time to incorporate another fast like this. The more that I'm home, the less I tend to do those fasts. When I'm traveling more often, I do them once or twice a month. Um, but yeah, those are the reasons I do it. My husband still does them to keep his blood sugar regulated and to ensure that he doesn't have uh, his A1C rise, things like that. Uh, it's just a really good lever. You can 
manage calories, you can manage fat to protein, you can manage fasting, like all of those are different levers. You really just have to find the right one that's gonna work best for you. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know down below what type of fasting you incorporate, how often, and then if there's a different lever that you would rather use over fasting.